Hi everybody, this is Ilya from NIR and we're today with Taylor from Top Network. Uh, today we'll learn more how Top Network operates and uh, interesting things about it. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit before kind of diving deep? Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Taylor Wei, uh, co-founder and CTO of Top Network. Uh, let's uh, start a little bit to uh, talk about uh, what about the Top Network. Uh, maybe uh, many people are not familiar. Uh, top network, the, our vision is uh, provides a public infrastructure for communication and the social media, uh, but in a different way, at a decentralized way. Mm -hmm. So it's a, that's from the, that's kind of thing. That's why we say uh, Telegram if it has our competitor. So actually, top network is uh, you have three pieces. Uh, one of it is a general purpose public blockchain. We call top chain is a high performance chain to enable real world business. Mm -hmm. uh, second one is a bunch of top service. Uh, in, there is a cloud communication service, dis decentralized. Uh, for example, in like a VPN service, messaging, CDN, mm -hmm. like that. Mm. So the piece is a uh, top token, a crypt cryptocurrency. Uh, the third piece on top of them is our ecosystem. Uh, like from real business, so that is a top network. Mm -hmm. So, but today we we have time limit, so we <laughs> more focus on top chain. Uh, sure. Yeah, but I, I, we can give a very high level is uh, image of what our top network. So let me draw something here. Uh, okay, so top just like we said, we have a three piece is like is top chain. Mm -hmm is top service, is top token. So that is, is a very simple present. So, but uh, inside with more detail like this is more technical. <laughs> uh, on the bottom is we call, uh, we call infrastructure layer. Mm -hmm. uh, is a P2P communication network. Uh, is a storage network. Okay, we call this is bottom line. On on top of them is like on top of them is that service. We are service layer. Uh, VPN message. So it's more like applications built on infrastructure, right? Yeah, but it's a service provider. Uh. Mm -hmm. So both of the node is from the minor or service provider. Mm -hmm. It's from a decentralized way. So it's service layer. So uh, a bunch of applications, they, in, they leverage by SDK, API, interactive those services. So we call have app, often VPN app, message app, mm -hmm. maybe it's a top messenger. Uh, so they use an SDK API. So interactive is a top service, but the top network we call infrastructure is support the service. Mm -hmm. So this is our picture. So, but uh, it's decentralized. We uh, we want to give the application uh, more choice. So we actually we have another one is like marketplace, uh, a decentralized marketplace that the app developer can choose which service provider, which service they can use. Mm, that for the same purpose. The same purpose. Yeah. So is this service is like pretty much just fixed API, but then implementation can be different. Yeah. So we. We offer the common SDK API. Mm -hmm. They support the, uh, I mean, the common feature, yeah. like a call feature, VPN feature. But mm -hmm. based on the SDK, you can add on some new one based on that, and then mm -hmm. deploy the service. But the underlying the protocol must be compatible. Mm -hmm. So the whole ecosystem must be run together. Yeah. Uh, so you can play a service on marketplace. You know, I offer something like. So that's why we call it. Uh, a decentralized cloud communicating service. Mm -hmm. uh, they see the service, it's not a sale. So it's a platform as service, mm -hmm. but it's decentralized way. So 
but uh, how incentive them is top token. You use top token for app, so they can consume the service. So service get a token, mm -hmm. uh, pay to the miner. Yeah, yeah. So that's the easy ecosystem in my mind. Is like do the services have business models themselves? Yeah, they can have their business model itself. Mm -hmm. For example, they can free, but uh, maybe they can charge like uh, yeah charge it in other way like. Mm -hmm. uh, they depends on their how they cost uh, yeah. uh, of course at the beginning in uh, uh, we are top we have a bunch of application we have own mm -hmm. actually we have the user uh, daily uh, daily active user we have over two million mm -hmm. so a huge user mm -hmm. so we have a VPN application messaging app secure message application mm -hmm. voice call video call this one so we prepare the more those user to the decentralized way. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning one man named the wrong chat they want a lot of users will be on the chain, mm -hmm. on the ecosystem. Because they're already using application. Yes. Their application of course so we will convert our decentralized application to decentralized way. Mm -hmm. So off to our user. So they use this one. Yeah. Let's dive deeper into this. Yeah, story. deeper in the end. Okay, <laughs> yes. So it's like more yeah, yeah, we yeah, understand. No, no, that's interesting too. Yeah. yeah. So top chain at Cray when we uh at the beginning actually we not intend to create or develop our own chain. We mm -hmm. try to find some chain on the market. Mm -hmm to support our cloud service, I mean decentralized service. But uh, finally we realized one true one, one thing is like no chain can be support them. Mm -hmm. The reason is the current blockchain is so expensive. I mean if we do one transaction we need to pay something. But uh, for real business, especially for the cloud uh, I mean I mean the communication service, mm -hmm. they have something like uh, with a huge volume, but each transaction is very tiny. Like we, if you using one VPN for one hour, maybe you pay the some sense. Yeah. Uh, but if you your transaction fee is more than that, it does not yeah, make yeah. sense. Yeah. So that is is, is let us say decide we create our own chain is going to a total different way. Mm -hmm. What's the way we have to make the it is like to go in like uh, the TPS must be enough high to handle the huge volume mm -hmm. because we are real users have on the currently we have uh, two million DAU mm -hmm. so they have to support the kind of TPS. Second, the cost is much low. In the most case, the transaction fee is zero. Mm -hmm. uh, so in most time, I'm uh, not always. Uh, most time is zero transaction. Mm -hmm. We, they have the flexible to support the other service because mm -hmm. it is a platform, so it should have it flexible. So that this kind of tag is conflict actually, like uh, is a huge challenge. So based on this, we design our top chain. So the top chain actually is a uh, is a multiple chain design. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, have the main chain. We have the main chain is top. Then and now with a bunch of the service chain. The main chain is on the top? Yeah. And then top uh, chains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is service chain, for them VPN service chain. Mm -hmm. uh, so main chain is for the financial settlement. Mm -hmm. uh, the service chain more about uh, business logic, uh, business service. But uh, that is not enough. So we have a third layer. We call uh, is layer to solution we have a state channel in the in mm. to the micro payment mm -hmm. for example if you have a finish one VPN session it's very tiny but it's one session yeah, yeah. so it, it's very easy to match the layer to solution mm -hmm. so but I yeah but you at the same time you may be using uh, messaging mm -hmm. VPN so bunch of can be combined together on mm -hmm. the service chain mm -hmm. they get a more uh, I mean the better performance the finally to submit the main chain mm -hmm. so we call three layer ledger mm -hmm. okay but
But they say it's a chin. I mean, they. But each service chain and main chain inside of them is we have support sharding. Mm. Uh, okay, we have we call two layer sharding. Uh, we can like uh, the top layer is like a beacon chain. Okay, but uh, we have difference on uh, other project in like we have zone. Each zone have classed. So each class is manages some shard. So zone is a logic is a concept like that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, inside the zone, we have the physical class to one class two. Each class measures some shard. So what what do you mean by class? Class is, is, is you can treat as like a minimal beacon chain. Mm -hmm. They manage the shard, so they cross link those shard. Mm -hmm. So inside is that's a two layer sharding. So that's inside ma main chain, right? Inside the main chain, inside service chain. So each of those chains has the structure. Yes, yeah, same okay. architecture. I see. Yeah. So a little difference uh, from the other uh, sharding project. Mm -hmm. They more like have the global beacon chain on the top. Of they manage some shard. Uh, even the e uh, ETH two point zero version. Uh, that problem there. That could be the bottleneck. Mm -hmm. Why we need to use sharding? Because sharding give us the advantage in like, we'll put a more node there, the way TPS grow increase, but the cost will be down. Mm -hmm. So we, which means the all final goal is like horizontal scale. So even that's <coughs> only the big country in the top and it's manage, direct manage the shard means they cannot like horizontal scale. Finally, we button it there. All right. I mean, that, let's dive deeper. So, so let's say we have what four shards, right? In or yeah, like m even more, right? You have yeah, exactly. Yeah, four, and then same here, right? Yeah. So, so there's few questions here. One is, um, what is kind of like how does fork cho fork choice rule kind of propagate through this? So yeah, like if like w I mean what what is the consensus here what is the fork choice like if there's a fork here which of this gets picked up uh, let me give you the if we talk about from the one transaction we call we talk about the whole process sure, yeah, either, yeah. yeah yeah actually consensus is done either here mm -hmm. uh, the big chain is not a manager the consensus okay they just uh, manage the voting staking and uh, random time block. I mean the clock, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the consensus is done is a shard, and is uh, the class of what it class for? There is actually secondary auditory, mm -hmm. second auditor for the uh, consensus. So if from the one transaction, we actually one transaction is sent to the top chain, they are going to source sender. I mean the sender account. Mm -hmm. Based on sender account address, we can. Uh, based on the select election block, so we can know which zone is handle them. So is the transaction going to the zone? The zone is more deep determining which class manage them. So they go into the shard one, that may be the sender account mm -hmm. at. So at here, we're doing consensus in yeah, like a debate, I mean, draw the fund from the account. Mm -hmm. Now, is a consensus is a PBFT. Just, just to check first, uh, the accounts are statically in in each shard? Uh, it's dynamically. Dynamically? Yeah. Okay. How, okay. Let's yeah, that is a big part about yeah, how to yeah. is a dynamic. It's not a very dynamic, right? but mm -hmm. it's time by time is yeah, changing yeah. that. Changing. Okay. Yeah, changing that. Okay, so so transaction went into S1. You're saying on S1, I mean, this is pretty much a chain. It's on its own, right? And uh, so you're running PBFT here? Yes. Okay. So once the block is come out, 
-hmm. they're not a direct uh, broadcast. They have they mm -hmm. must go through class. Mm -hmm. So class will be choose a random node to second the PBFT. Mm -hmm. So that PBFT is audit the result. Either. So so cl is class like a node or w what is this? No, they they have a node inside. This is like its own chain as well. Yeah. Okay, so this is its own chain. Yeah. So you're saying so tr block was produced. Yeah. It gets included here, like it's sent as a. That's a regular way. I mean, the traditional way to the cross link. Mm -hmm. We are different. Actually, when the block is come out, they the inside of the pro I mean the consensus of process. Mm -hmm. uh, one no step have to go up to class. They do audit. Once the audit is finished, mm -hmm. so that the block come out. I see. So how wh what what is what is the information is being sent from the validators of shard to the validators of class? Yeah, um, board raw transaction mm -hmm. actually raw transaction actually go for class first, so they know raw transaction. I mean original transaction, mm -hmm. then transaction dispatch to shard. Okay. So shard is uh, they create their proposal. And it's going to PBFT, they create some signature. They think they should be mm -hmm. passed. So they send the result to class again. So mm -hmm. that block include uh, transaction hash. So this is just hashes of transaction, right? Yeah. Plus, uh, I'm assuming, two third, at least two third signatures of yeah. shard one validators. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is sent to class? Class node. Yeah. The class node, they have the raw transaction so they can compare, check, yeah. Yeah, check the transaction okay. is valid or not. Then check the account balance enough or not. Mm -hmm. So class, they do secondary PBFT, they generate the multiple signature, then put on this one, mm -hmm. then return back to shard, the, lead, the leader of the shard. So w what is the, like, like if they have all the transactions and they have all of the state of the shards that are under yeah. the class, yeah. why do you need to have the separate chains? It's a good question, yeah. Uh, the reason is like, uh, if everything put here, mm -hmm. uh, this is about a sec security concern of sharding. Sharding mm -hmm. means in like, uh, your staking is sharding. You protect the shading mm -hmm. actually like uh, and uh, so if there have some ratio code node in here it means for example it one also to be a crap as uh, the consensus but uh, if we separate two layer is a good benefit in like two layer is run their own logically they are different node mm -hmm. they is hard to find who will be auditing me which one will be this consensus? Who is the leader? They don't know. Totally don't know. Well, I mean, you know who the leader is here, and you know. They who don't the know. Why not? They they send out. They don't know who will be audited them. All is based on VIF, based on the transaction, raw transaction. They have the random, random, and based on the your the signature, they have increased random number. So based on the time block, mm -hmm. they have random number. So based on those on together, we will calculate to who should be the audit them. So okay, so you say not all, so let's say, I mean, I how many validators do you have for how many people in the committee here? Uh, minimum is 127. 127. How many in the class? Same? Uh, minimum is 127. Okay. So, so let's say one, one of them is a leader right now. They produced a block. They collected yeah. signature from some subset of this, yeah. and they you're saying they don't send it to every but one, they send it to a subset of these people? They send it to a subset, actually, but they they don't know which subset, so actually they broadcast first. Okay. Everybody, even class knows receives the broadcast. Yeah. Then each node decided, okay, I'm in the subset or not. Okay. But, th but then, I mean, the, your security is just 2x, that's all right, because you, you know, like if, if you did not have this, you only had class and they were doing all the transaction validation, yeah. then uh, like for a single account, the security of it will be like, you need to, you need to compromise two thirds of 
127 or like one search to stall yeah. to search to actually uh, produce a valid block. Here you need to search of 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 yeah, of both two, layer. Yeah, 256. And le like when you say that this is sent to a random subset, uh, what wh how big is that subset, and and how many of them can like. Uh, the big set is uh, 61. 61. Yeah. Okay. So send to 61 in class. So how many of them, like what, what if, you know, one says, oh, this is invalid? Uh, the base on VIF. So they, so first they use VIF, get as a subset in the class. Yeah. The second one in VIF is select, choose one, one lead to, to PPF to audit. Okay, so let's say I select it as a leader yeah. and I say this is invalid block. Yeah. So what happens next? They, they broadcast, they broadcast the, the proposal in this class, ask the other people, other node to sign on that. Sign that. Yes. So to second the round of PPFT. Yeah. So, and then, so if, if for example I'm malicious, I get the like, View state, uh, view change. And uh, if the leader is Mauritius? Yeah. Yes. If the leader is Mauritius, they maybe they can don't send out the proposal. That's okay because uh, the shadow leader, they will be time out, mm -hmm. not finished. Then we will send it to a second try. I mean, the try. So again. the next step. Yeah, the, next step. Next step is a diff different, uh, you're using subset. different random yeah. number. They're using different subset, okay. different leader. So yeah, so you need yeah you need pretty much two. I mean, like out of the sixty-one, how many confirmations do you need uh, for yeah. for this to be accepted? Same thing. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, Twelve sorry, thirty. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm just like so if you if you do have two thirds of malicious here and here, you can produce invalid blocks. Yeah. So actually, is uh, why we design this two-layer sharding. Mm -hmm. and, uh, another reason is uh, actually sh between sharding a class to class, we reshuffling, uh, reshuffling the node, mm -hmm. advanced node. So the node is like a, just like water is flowing. So the staking is like is flowing. So is a random is mm -hmm. prediction in and out. So how frequently do you sh do you shuffle? And Right now is about uh, in like thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Yeah. So you expect in thirty minutes to the, for them when they change to this class to sync up all of the state of all of the shards here, right? Mm, just uh, is yeah. Then if the node is uh, from the class one to class two, mm -hmm. the new node join the class two. They need to synchronize some state. Yeah. 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 They need to download the full yeah. state. Do you give them time to do that? Yes. We actually we we at the ahead uh, half select time i mean they give the 15 minutes mm -hmm. to, to prepare synchronize. yeah ahead is the uh i mean we we call election mm -hmm. so when the election is uh, effect before the, the half time is mm -hmm. like a uh, 15 minutes yeah so that is uh, have enough time to download something like that uh, makes sense uh, okay um so but at the end you are like so you only have like two shards pretty much per class Oh uh, no, that depends on how many nodes we have. That's why, why we define just a minimum, oh, minimum node is in shard. If we have more nodes, we're going to more shard, you know. I see. So then the idea is that like you have more shards here, and then if like there is three of 61, then you can get like three shards in it. Yeah. The, of course, the node more is more classic here, you like this. So both layer is dynamically be expanded and yeah. be so th this doesn't actually run it its own chain, right? I correctly understand. This is just this is just a set of nodes. This is not its own chain. Oh uh, yeah, they just validated. Yeah, they just validators elected to kind of double check the shards. Yeah, it's like a shift the load into another layer. They just do audit the validator. So that's why they can handle more transaction than shard nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, so they do heavy job is here. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah. So in that case, uh, maybe the each of the horizontal can scale. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and more not in more class, more zone, and more shard. Uh, but wh why do you why did you decide to scale uh, classes versus just use the same structure on top level? Uh, you mean why are we using this one? Yeah, no, I mean you still have beacon chain and yeah. zones and classes, right? Yeah. So so you have like beacon chain, mm -hmm. zone, yeah. class, yeah. shard, right? Yeah. So class already scales with number of nodes. Yeah. So what if you just had class on top and just shard? Shards. Yeah, but we can we are built from multiple zones, we have a one global unique one to synchronize something. In like for example, in like uh, node join, mm -hmm. uh, time block. Mm -hmm. The synchronize the time for, for every node. So beacon chain will be generated as a time block every 10 seconds. I see. And uh, over the, that time block will be have the random nodes there. So you can push it to everybody, they mm -hmm. driving them. So that is, so every block have to include the, the, this one is reference to one time block. Mm -hmm. Every block. Every, every block in a shard? Yeah, 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 they have to reference. So they pretty much reference yeah. like this? Yeah, actually either they reference there. Uh, they send it back? No, no, it's like a U time block, it broadcasts every one, every mm -hmm. node. So they know the, what's the current time block, they yes. know. So they put on the, the uh, hash random yeah. from the time block into their own block. Mm -hmm. So that in the other layer node can be valid or checked. Mm -hmm. They want to prevent something like you hold some block and uh, not like you produce them ahead of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they can prevent this kind of attack. Mm -hmm. uh. Uh, okay, so but this still doesn't like. Why do you need zones in this case? Uh, zone. Uh, that's a long story. Like because uh, currently, let's say example for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Their node is distributed globally randomly. Yeah. Mm -hmm which means you don't know where your neighborhood node. Mm -hmm. It could be very far, very near. Network performance is random, right? Yeah. But a zone, we try to give a concept in like... Geographic? Yeah, geographic. I see. So you're actually trying to cluster shards within one ge geography? Not a one geography. It's like, a, it's like, a, like a algorithm in like a uh, node is... A, for example, if you have the bunch of nodes on the California mm -hmm. here, the other next coming node could be the five out of China. Mm -hmm. In that case, in like for network issue or other issue, could be the you slow than other people, so your yeah. consensus cannot catch up. So you'll be slowly, slowly out. Yeah, yeah. That is like, like a business real world. Like if you yeah. you know that is more here. It'll be more yeah latency yeah, yeah so be more win so more get a fi financial gain mm -hmm. so be increase you more node here mm -hmm. so that is not is centralized way but we try to increase people is going to put your node is like uh, what kind of right node is there mm -hmm. is there in the America yes so you can put a node there but not exactly ask you same place same job location yeah, yeah, yeah no I understand but like but who who is deciding which zone they'll be? Uh, at if we not decide there mm -hmm. at the beginning, the seed node is deployed some like uh, we can say the seed node we we put uh, some node on the very important place. What mm -hmm. place, for example, international uh, data center in like uh, mm -hmm. U.S. West, uh, U.S. Mm -hmm. East, uh, European, Singapore, Japan. So those node is as a seed is there. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Then next is just, just like a community, like uh, Travis and put a note, uh, whatever they want. They just random assign. Mm -hmm. No, no, but like, l let's say I have, a, I have my computer running there, right? Yeah. I spin it up. Which zone I'll end up in? Which zone is it? <laughs> like, do, we, do I decide which zone I want to be in? You cannot decide. I cannot decide. Okay. Yeah. So then how is it decided? That That's it. Because another Purpose exacting. Okay. That they will do measure actually. We call POB like pro bandwidth or pro network. Mm -hmm. So they will do the test. Mm -hmm. The test measure is like uh, uh, what's the best zone is for this node. Mm -hmm. 
but it's not exactly. They just uh, random. It's like uh, this is like a FTS uh, for the Satoshi. Uh, they have the is like uh, if I'm more sticking, mm -hmm. still random, but it's more high possibility. Mm -hmm. So if your network is very close to zone one, okay, you still be random could be zone two or zone one, but high possibility is going to zone one. Okay. So, so, but you pretty much this requires like consensus on a floating value, or like on a bunch of floating values in a way. A little bit, or, not a full it or, or, yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe, maybe let's let's talk about what's the consensus in the, on the beacon chain then, like yeah. how how it actually yeah. operates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, from if you look into the architecture, is very mm -hmm. big. Yeah. They have the three layer ledger, mm -hmm. two layer sharding. Uh, Actually, we have the beacon chain at the top. Yeah, mm -hmm. the t all of it is not is just for technical. All of it is we want to solve the problem. Uh, we get a much a lot of trouble when we develop this chain mm -hmm. because nobody can give a reference. That's the kind of architecture nobody have one on the industry right now. Mm -hmm. So everything we need, okay, find a problem, find a solution, continue that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we we are talk about uh, some the two layer okay. shading, yeah. Uh, so we can go ahead. I guess maybe before then, be, well, it's kind of related, but so if you send money from shard one right to shard seven, shard eight, yeah. Um, so yeah, okay, we deducted money here. Mm -hmm. This block is published. How does it make it here? Yeah. Or when we the deduct here, we actually do consensus, mm -hmm. and uh, just as we said, we do audit there. Yeah. After audit, they generate one receipt. Mm -hmm. The receipt will be broadcast to uh, send it to the receive so sharding. Mm -hmm. So that sharding can vary the receipt is is signature by the valid people is another for people mm -hmm. is valid, uh, is a signature. Okay. Then once we they using PBFT determine is a valid receipt, they add in the fund to this account. So what if receipt got lost during this travel? Okay, that's a very <laughs> deep question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is deep something like uh, <laughs> I mean it's like it's very difficult to solve the very. I mean we we got a lot lot of problem on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if receipt is lost. We have uh, two mechanisms to fix them. Mm -hmm. One of is like because a lot transaction actually sent it to receiving side. Mm -hmm. you, you, at the beginning, the transaction, lot transaction, one is going to S one sharding, mm -hmm. another one is going to receive account mm -hmm. sharding for here. So actually, they know the transaction is coming. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so it's, they expect is the consensus should be or receipt should be generated in the proper time. Mm -hmm. If not, the time out. So that will be on the lead or something, someone will be asking, propose asking, pull something mm -hmm. back. Is like what kind of thing in there. So they will pull to like a, to here or? Yeah, to here. Yeah. And they will ask like what's happening with this transaction. Yeah, what happened? They valid or not, they deny or something. Mm -hmm. So we the process will continue on. I see. Uh, second one is here is uh, this one. This is why we have two layers. This one is when generate the receipt here, they have a job. They should be the delivered to the there. Mm -hmm. Get the receipt. They deliver receipt to this shard. Yeah. They have to make sure they receive. Mm -hmm. That's their job. So we call actually we call it a routing network. So maybe we, we jump to the uh, three layer network, maybe mm -hmm. more clear about this one. The top chain, this is among different angle actually we top level have a three layer network mm -hmm. we call <coughs> an edge network. Uh, it's a routing network. Locking audit network. On the low one is like consensus. Sorry, what is this? Edge. Uh, actually, that is 
app or client, they not a direct uh, contact the class. Mm -hmm. Also, you not direct contact consensus node. Mm -hmm. They actually they go into a bunch of the edge node. Mm. I see. Yeah. That's the first way. The edge node is going to the which like the class. Mm -hmm. Then going to shard. So that's it. so their job is routing. And audit. Once finish audit, their job is changed to routing. So they deliver the receipt or confirmation to the other room, other cluster, then waiting there back to the ship to them. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens for the audit and routing if you do have like a fork here? So you know. Somebody got the hold of 66% of stake in the shard, mm -hmm. and they actually created a fork, two blocks that are fully finalized. Oh, you mean the here? Yeah. OK. So like one set of people received this block in on the cluster, one set of people, because it's a different random number, right, will receive uh, this block. Mm -hmm. Like they will validate it separately, audit it, sign in it. Mm -hmm and then route it to other shards. Yeah. Uh, so the, the on the top chain, actually, is no fork. I mean, it's not a lot of fork. Even is, uh, back to the question, like, if the hook, I mean, the most node on class and a shard, mm -hmm. they be is a malicious node, you cannot prevent the generated the, the block. Mm -hmm. All of it Block is a signature where the people sign so yeah. enough there, they can throw out. So that's the way. If the most node is malicious, you cannot stop them. Mm -hmm. So we 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 use a different angle to ch fix the problem. Mm -hmm. We we that's why we call it like a random partition node into the class. Random node is reshuffling to other shard, and uh, the staking is is uh, like uh, I mean the higher staking node they be high possibility select to be lead mm -hmm. and so that's a way to solve the problem so but, but like in this case uh, I'm not even gonna have like let's say there's a in the cluster right no not not nobody's malicious in the cluster mm -hmm. but I did somehow get in the shard mm -hmm. uh, malicious okay. like majority yeah okay and I produced two blocks okay like f create a fork, mm -hmm. very terrible. But I send it to the cluster, mm -hmm. like for uh, audit, mm -hmm. and different set of people received it, because you send it to a random set, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens when you have like these two different sets in a cluster, seeing different alternative blocks? Yeah. For the same height. Yeah. If we every node in class join the audit. Mm -hmm. Your problem will be another exact. Yeah, but yeah. you only have yeah subset, only right? sixty one. That's yeah. why only sixty one in my like half node join. Yeah. So possibly is going to the left or going to right. Yeah, like if they can control the network. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In that case, yeah, like when they actually the more more some inside detail. <laughs> actually, yeah, like. One half node is if if we have say the node is one hundred twenty seven yeah. totally, half node joins the audit, mm -hmm. but then node the receipt is not sent by there, mm -hmm. so receipt by sent by other people. Yeah, but but you have you have half people, so you have a cluster, right? Yeah. Half received one block. Yeah. Like half received this one, half received this one. So they will send different receipts, right? These guys will send like that you you know didn't sp or whatever did spend like hundred. This one said you spend a thousand, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, is for same account mm -hmm. that not happen. Same and each transaction must be one by one, one finish and another. So you cannot. But this is like a this is blocks of the same height, right? 
Yes, so it's, it's, it's they're kind of happening at the same time. The one it must be free. Uh, must be, must be what? Because the every node can where there's the only one, uh, same high, uh, yeah. is allowed to produce. The only but problem right now is you just uh, this node know this transaction. Mm -hmm. Other node don't know. Yeah. So that's why we say once audit here. Yeah. When you finish audit. The receipt is not sent by there. Mm -hmm. They are sent to other people. I see. But how do they know about it? Or you just send them yeah. as well? The, because we can VIF calculate who will be subset to audit. Mm -hmm. Of course, other node will be sender. I see. So pretty much everybody needs to receive the yes. everything. Yeah. So so if you have like more than two shards, right? Let's say you have like 10 shards here. Yeah. So this guy's... This guy's verifying this block. Th this guy's verifying this block. For this block, who is going to be? All of them will be senders. Once the, the block is, f it means the audit. Yeah. The other people have to know that. All of them. Yeah, all of them. I see. So but they they just uh, waiting to see, uh, not take action if yeah, they yeah. say okay. But they do need to receive all of the blocks. They then need to receive that. Yeah, so the, the the bandwidth they need to have is pretty high. Yes, that's why the class have be shading same way. M what do you mean? I mean the the one class they have limited bandwidth, uh, so they cannot uh, too much too many transaction. That's why we on the this layer mm -hmm. we also need to do shading. But like this is already sharded, right? This is like different shards processed by different folks. Yeah, so that's why the one class is manage a limited shard. This mm -hmm. class of manage another bunch of shard. Mm -hmm. I see. So then it's mostly limited by how much like the computers here can receive all of the blocks from all of the shards yes, exactly. at the same time. Yeah. All right. How strong the node? Maybe if the super compute, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it can handle everything. I see. Uh, but our goal is a lot is cheaper node is mm -hmm. like uh, cloud node. For yeah, them, yeah. maybe fifty month, um, fifty dollar per month. Mm -hmm. They can play in the V class yeah. node or shadow node. So we cannot expect expect to their how strong. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say more node we separate to more shard, more class. Mm -hmm. That one, the case will be, but st still it be horizontal scale out. To just now. Let's uh, let's go over the beacon chain. Okay, so what kind of thing you want to know from Beacon Chain? Well, you said it uh, pretty much provides time, right? Provides randomness mm -hmm. and uh, keeps track of validators, detects zones. Um, so, yeah, just yeah. how how that operates as well as kind of. Uh, actually, Beacon Chain is like the node is shared by all there, of the all yeah. of there. Mm -hmm. They don't have. Of course, some dedicated node can be joined the beacon chain, but it's not economically mm -hmm. like. Uh, so every advanced node we call advanced node on cluster. Mm -hmm. So that's the I can give you some term. You know we have the uh, validate node. It like in the shard. Mm -hmm. We call advanced node in the cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we have archive node. Ah, archive node in the different network. Mm. Okay, those node uh, can be uh, be become node. Yeah, I mean, node will become yeah. beacon chain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so beacon chain actually is a big network. That's why they cannot. They not manage the consents or mm -hmm. transaction because they must be slow. Yeah. Must be secure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for that is more like we for Bitcoin chain like we first thing they need to in like generate a time time block. Uh, every ten second. Uh, they do P also do PBFT. Mm -hmm. But slow PPFT, <laughs> you like yeah, just only time bro. What what do you mean slow PPFT? I mean because like they just wait or yeah, a lot of nodes join the PPFT. Okay, oh, just a lot of nodes. Yeah, a lot of nodes. How 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 many nodes participate or how many expected nodes participate? At least two hundred fifty six. Okay. 
at least in line. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's it. Time block in we generate the block this sign, mm -hmm. then publish to everybody. The first the job, then do the second job. So I'm just how is this ten seconds determined? Why we decided ten seconds? No, no, no. How like as a node, am I just measuring my time myself, or this verifiable delay function, or? Uh, several way. Uh, of course, at the beginning, every computer have a different time. Mm -hmm. Even you synchronize, they yeah, will be yeah. later will be changed. Yeah. Uh, so, but at the, at the beginning, the I mean the genius block, mm -hmm. they writing okay, uh, start they say this is some I mean seed node, yeah, yeah. some some seed node. Okay, we generate the block. Mm -hmm. At that time, the time is synchronized. So other new node join that, maybe the uh, UTC time is not the same, mm -hmm. but they will receive time block. Mm -hmm. So based on time block, we adjust the local time. Mm -hmm. uh, not exactly good, but it could be the uh, yeah yeah offset will be removed something. So uh, it like uh, not exact ten second, but around that one. Mm -hmm. Because we not ask this. Uh, I mean, that just the like, time is not on the blockchain. Not ask like some industrial clock how yeah, to yeah. wear. Yeah. Well, okay, the the question is, can these folks start like accelerating time? Can they start producing blocks every five seconds, every two seconds? Uh, it's a lot of that. It's what? I mean, the, the five second maybe is not possible, but the nine second, the eleven second, the yeah, twelve yeah. seconds is no, possible. No, no. Can they do it if they want to? Like if I ch change the code that I'm running my machine, mm -hmm. can I tr like and I suggest it for everybody to run? Yeah. Will it go to five seconds? Uh, they are, if you offset too much uh, from the other node thinking, yeah. uh, it will be dropped. The node. It will be dropped. Okay. Yeah. So now that we, so that's why we using PP still using PBFT mm -hmm. to the concerns. Mm -hmm. so, so make they have the same step on the time. So the second job is like uh, node join. So that's a different process for other projects. Mm -hmm. uh, each node join, actually we have smart contract running on Bitcoin chain. Mm -hmm. uh, they is check is what are you staking. Uh, uh, do we have the token there? Mm -hmm. uh, a signature. Actually when node join, they have to need to do the POW mm. to prove they is not an attack. So some the bunch of things that they are vetted. Mm -hmm. The node is is good to join. Then it includes the test network. Mm -hmm. After that, they is assigned to some zone. They is generate the block. The block include what's the node address, what's the node uh, the staking received. Mm -hmm. The proof they have staking there. How much staking? So how how does it prove that? How do you prove that? However, they is like each big chain is have every account, have a node's account information. Where does it get it though? Like the recent one. Right. How do you get the l latest data from shards on the beacon chain? Because they, this is a design for all smart contract in mm -hmm. For the node, if you will want to join, the you have to first of all you have to already create account. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the, the top token lockup there. Yeah. Then you have to go into the, your shard to get a receipt. Mm -hmm. Then the receipt is going to send it to that smart contract. I see. So you have you have a way to send information from shard to Beacon Chain. Yeah, exactly. I see. Okay. So Beacon Chain will vetted is a receipt. So it is like a, a special transaction. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, in this case, Beacon Chain is like another shard, pretty much. Yeah, exactly, you know. Because you you'll pretty much send the same thing, right? Like you'll send. Yes, yeah. You know. So the job is not a join. It like vetted, uh, then recommend uh, to the other class or mm -hmm. shard. Uh, so that's the main job is there. Of course, it's staking uh, and uh, slash uh, okay, reward. So slashing, I'm assuming, if somebody like here at audit detects something wrong, mm -hmm. they'll just send the receipt to Beacon Chain. Yeah. To slash. Mm -hmm. 
So they do all of the slow thing, mm -hmm. but it's a very important thing yeah. over there. And then the reward, they just send receipt back to the shard to yes, yeah. keep the reward back. And then if I want to unstake, how like I send the receipt as well, or how does that work? If you unstake, like I want to stop. Quit. Staking. You want quit? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have to yeah send it to the. I need to quit. So they will be generated another. It's not. It's not a join. It's like a node leave. Mm -hmm. Leave block. Announce to everybody. They not the leave. They not the join the consensus anymore. Audit anymore. So the everybody can not leave. They can continue accrue that node. Mm -hmm. So how how fast does node leave propagate? Oh, uh, there's a long time in like okay. yeah. We we not a lot node is join leave very quickly. Mm -hmm. If we want to join, actually, you have to wait in 12 hours. 12 hours? Yeah, you have to wait in on the 12 hours in the pool. Yeah. Then we be uh, use a priority queue, is a one by one recommended to the top chain. Mm -hmm. When you leave, it's a similar process. Mm -hmm. You have to wait in long time, it, yes. but more longer, is 24 hours to 72 hours, actually. Mm -hmm. uh. That's good. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, it's like. Yeah, yeah the network will change very exactly fast, yeah. it will be. Uh, uh, okay, and then you also said it generates randomness, some sorts of randomness. Uh, random is like uh, it's it not a whole, not a wholly controlled by them actually. Uh, so shuffling actually is we like uh, we have the uh, shuffling actually is here. why we are called zone actually. We have is like uh, in like. Uh, we call ZEC like uh, election committee. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They is uh, is include all of advanced nodes in class. Mm -hmm. So they decide how to shuffle between class. But uh, how is the shuffling determined? Like what's a random right? Yeah, so but uh, it follow, but it's based on staking. You know? Yeah, yeah. So what's the source of randomness? Like yeah, source random is uh, is like. Uh, Couple of sauce. Uh, one sauce, I mean, from the random. One sauce is a global time block. Mm -hmm. Because for the like, shuffling, is, for example, every 30, uh, 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That you have to include some time block. So, yeah. time block have randoms. That's the first one. Uh, second one, the shuffling, they generate their own block, actually. They have to announce general block to announce the shuffling. Who who in this case does it? Yes, the election committee. So there's another blockchain here. Yeah, inside. Yeah. I see. All right. So there's a blockchain on a zone level. Yes, they have to. But they just uh, do election. So it's like once every thirty minutes they yeah. produce a block. They generate on one block. I see. They generate the say block. So each block have the random inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so the one is like so when you say there's randomness inside wh what kind of randomness yeah the another you we just like talking about staking mm -hmm. and uh, random so each node will be sought by staking mm -hmm. uh, we use an FTS it called follow the Satoshi uh, algorithm so uh, that's the algorithm we, we give us uh, sorting the node mm -hmm. by staking but it gives a random so in that case we be we be random choose some node mm -hmm. from the class then go into the pool mm -hmm. put it in the pool actually they, they have the pool here yeah go in the pool then another class of shell random choose the pool from pool to replace some node in their shell mm -hmm. i see so, but uh, this randomness is deterministic, right? Sorry? This, this random selection is deterministic. Yeah. So where is the uh, source of randomness, right? How, like, do you just use last, ha like last hash of the block, yeah. or you have something? Yeah, that three is combined together is source. That is drive the, the committee, election committee. Mm -hmm. They generate the block. I see. All right. So my favorite question, and if there's a fork on Beacon Chain? <laughs> uh, sorry? If there's a fork on a Beacon Chain? 
uh, not a lot of folk because it's like a, must be a two or so the people agree. Yeah, yeah. So what happened if two thirds agreed to fork? Uh, is it disagree or do they did agree to fork? Like, uh, like you have two blocks with two thirds of signatures. Yeah. What happens? What happened? The so worst case, just like you said, they is like generate some block is wrong. Yes. Something in the fork. But even that way, they not uh, impact the chain much because they just uh, generate the time block. They generate the the node join leave something like that. They not uh, really destroy the. But but the blocks here may include different hashes of different time blocks, right? Yeah. Like you may have two shards which have different time blocks. Yeah, so that's time. that's it. that's why why we say have they we have the protecting here. They mm -hmm. will be validated in like uh, which one shall we choose. Mm -hmm. If we have two blocks generated by beacon chain, yeah. they will choose one. Mm -hmm. If they choose, okay, that is uh, valid. But but you have different clusters, right? They may choose differently. Yeah, exactly. So that's why the sharding they, they manage their own. For this, they think uh, this time block is valid. Mm -hmm. They another shot may be the different thinking. That's okay. Is it? Yeah, because for them, they just validate that, uh, that time block. For they is determined. They is determined. They will check everything. If they both agree, mm -hmm. that is valid the time block. It is. And and it's independent that like the receipts now kind of coming from because different receive, time blocks. Receive is not. Not time blocked, yeah, or not like not time not block. reference time blocks. Yeah. They receive. They just check who signed the receipt. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many people signed it? So that is decided. There is enough power, enough staking. They decided the mm -hmm. receipt is correct. Yeah, maybe the block reference time block is duplicated on here or the fork there. Mm -hmm. That's the second problem. I mean, it's a low, it's a small issue. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why we call big country. We don't don't want to do direct join the consensus. Don't relate about the money. Yeah, they just do some regular thing. So mm -hmm. they're not incensed as people to fork them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely m more interesting to fork here and like create you know more receipts with different amounts of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's the problem with sharding, right? Is that we split the security, so it's easier to attack. And depend depends. I mean, shuffling every half an hour obviously is better. Mm -hmm. uh, like our main concern with shuffling every half an hour is that as your state grows, right, mm -hmm. uh, it may become like too slow to sync, right? Like right now, it's easier. You may sync it too much. Yeah, like you, like as you as you go from one shard to another, right? Mm -hmm. You may be syncing like gigabytes of state, and like. Yeah, I know your concerns. They have the other design inside, but I'm not not talk about today because mm -hmm. time limit. Yeah, yeah. We have the, to solve this concern. We have mm -hmm. lattice. Lattice. Yeah, DAG mm -hmm. lattice. All actually, each account have their own chain. Mm, I see. The different, so they can gen regularly prune the account. Mm. So that's why class the advanced they don't keep a whole history. They just want to keep the last uh, full unit. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, full, even full unit. Like Ethereum right now is at 100 gigs, yeah. just the state, not even the history. Yeah, that's they have another design like uh, <laughs> asynchronization, on demand, and acceleration. Uh, they is like is the, they have to work together. Mm. Mm -hmm. Today's blockchain, the one block include a lot of account. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what account include, mm -hmm. so that's why when you synchronize, you have to synchronize a whole bunch of block. Yeah, yeah. You don't know uh, no idea, but that really gave us idea. Mm. When this uh, transaction is read about account A, so we just want to synchronize account A's block. Mm -hmm. That is much light that mm -hmm. can be done on demand. I see. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting too. Figure out, but yeah, we. <laughs> yeah, so this is about is one question problem. <laughs> there's another design, yeah, another yeah. solution, then one problem. But yeah. no, it's it's good. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. thanks a lot. That that was very a lot of things. Yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of different components. Yeah. Um, check out the uh, your. Uh, I'm assuming it's top dot network. Yeah. Top dot network for more details.
Yeah, we, from the top level detail, we can visit our top level, top network dot org. Uh, they okay. have a lot of information there. Of course, you can email us. Uh, uh, we can give you a response about a technical question or other things. And uh, we also encourage people in like uh, join our community. Uh, the more easy to get more information, uh, whatever technical or progress or mention. Actually, we mention is like we directly is finished. Mm -hmm. We are testing. Mm -hmm. So right now we just is like, but we hire the sort of company, sort mm -hmm. of party company. They are auditing their code. Yeah. Once uh, finish the auditing, we be public or source source code and then launch mainnet. Mm -hmm. So that's why you uh, ask a lot of question in the practice and mm -hmm. not the uh, But that question we also a problem challenge we also uh, experienced it before. So yeah. we have solutions there. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you are you are very <laughs> strong in engineering. You are engineer. Eh? You are coding. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks.